Hello, and welcome to the Power Your Advice podcast. The Power Your Advice podcast is designed to bring financial advisors new ideas, why those ideas should be considered, and how to implement them into your business. This podcast is brought to you by Advisorpedia, the best place for advisors to grow their minds and business. This is your host, Doug Heikinen. And today we have Adam Holt with us, who is the CEO and founder of AssetMap. AssetMap is an advisor software platform used to visualize client households financial situation and as an engagement experience for delivering financial guidance. AssetMap just received the highest user rating among top financial planning software companies. This ranking came as a result of more than 5,200 responses collected for the 2021 T3 Inside Information Software Survey. Wow. Welcome, Adam. Thanks, Doug. Great to be here with you. Congratulations on that ranking. My goodness. Thank you. Well, I guess it's what the advisor said was, uh, I mean, we've been saying it for, we're just glad everybody heard us. <laughs> it's kind of funny. No, we've been really blessed. Um, it's been exciting to be in this business and, and get the kind of accolade from our, our customers and advisors. So thank you for pointing it out. Yeah. So, so tell us about Asset Map. When did you start this journey and what was the goal when you started? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think like most solutions that come together today, it wasn't really intended to be a company uh, for other people. I mean, it's amazing now to see how many people we've touched. Um, but, you know, I think like most uh, innovations, this started in my own practice. I've been a financial practitioner for, I guess, about 23 years now. Uh, CFP by trade, uh, focus on wealth management, asset management, insurance placement. Uh, was part of a firm that uh, grew to about 25 people, about a billion and a half of AUM. Uh, still did a good amount of life production. Uh, but we found the challenge was consistently advisors had a hard time communicating the technical details of a household to them. All right. Most, most families, when you think about it, haven't had the knowledge or haven't been given the educational opportunity to understand how legal and tax insurance investment, these things work together. So I started actually drawing out what was going on in people's lives as best I could understand it. As you probably know, most financial professionals have a fact finding requirement, not just from a suitability standpoint, but to give good advice, we have to start with the facts. So I would take those facts from our early interviews of clients and I would draw a diagram of what was going on. And uh, over the time, this became such a prolific part of my own practice that uh, we needed to standardize it. Uh, and so what I did is I got a software program that did some engineering work and started drawing this. And, and years later, I was in a meeting. I remember this distinctly. I was in a meeting with a client. I was at their house. I'd done about three, four hours of prep time just to do the analysis. And uh, I walked into his house. I brought up my analysis and he saw my asset map. That's the drawing I did. He said, forget all that stuff. I want your drawing. I don't want your, <laughs> your 30 pages of stuff. I, I can't explain that to my spouse. I said, what do you want? Do you want the drawing? He says, yeah, give me that. And, uh, and I started providing it to clients and literally our revenue production tripled that year. Uh, and then it tripled again and it tripled again. And I'm thinking, my goodness, what, what is this saying to us? People want simplicity, Doug. They, 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 they recognize that as technicians, we need to bring competent advice, right? And advisors need to do that work on the back end. Advisors need to do it. Um, but the clients want clarity and simplicity. So we just built a, a program around it. So that, those are the roots. Uh, we're talking all the way back to 2006. It's amazing how far it's come. Yeah. So that was a big aha scene um, your, your friend say, just give me the one pager. What are some of the other ahas along the way that you've picked up and implemented? Yeah, it's a good question. I, you know, when we built, you know, kind of taking that fast forward, when I built the software, I realized I didn't know what I was doing. Um, thankfully I had enough money to burn as a young guy in his early thirties without a family yet. Uh, and I said, we're just going to invest in our own business. Right. And, we're going to build technology, right? Everybody's got an app. We're going to build one. Um, and I wasted an extraordinary money, amount of money <laughs> learning how not to build a business. Uh, I didn't have advocacy. I didn't have a technology background. I had the vision. I had the ability to communicate, but I spent a lot of money. I learned, Doug, that uh, you really want to surround yourself with the right people. You don't want to just go at it and start deciding you're going to build a skyscraper with the, you know, the only background I had was building sandcastles on the beach. Um, so 
so I think um, <laughs> that's an interesting analogy, actually. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I think for technology, putting the right people in place was really critical. And it took me a few years before I got the right consultants and then partners who said, wait a minute, this thing could be big. 2012, we actually showed it at a conference to several other uh, top producers in the financial space. They said they had the same exact problem. Could they use the system? I said, all right, fine. So we'll let those first 20 people in. It literally went viral. You know, you look at where we are today, there's... Well, several thousand advisors using asset map. Uh, we have over a million people in it. There's, we just cataloged over $1.4 trillion and we've mapped that for people. Uh, it's a thing, right? And so that, where did that come from? Well, it came from an idea to solve a problem of just trying to communicate complexity. And I think, think that's the takeaway from most of us is one of the most, one of the best tools in financial advice is a yellow pad and a pen, right? Because we have to educate our clients and we do it all the time. We've been doing it for you know a hundred years. Uh, I don't think that's going away. The challenge today is of course, we don't necessarily get together in person. We got to meet digitally and how do you still engage somebody and educate them? And so we're really big on still drawing on the screen, right? Whiteboarding. So 1.4 million people are using asset map. So it's for investors, but also for advisors. Mm. Well, our tool is, is uh, actually our customers, if you will, are advisors. And those advisors have mapped over a million people and $1.4 trillion in, real, in, uh, in, in assets and liabilities and so forth. So just to give you a scale, that's hard to understand kind of how much value that is. But imagine a, a treasure map for a million people where all of their finances, assets, liabilities, insurance policies, people, and uh, income sources are literally drawn out and you know where they are on one page. That's, that's super powerful. When you think about the, the data understanding there is, is really quite amazing. Um, you call it a simple elegance. Paint a picture mm. for us. Paint a picture in audio. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, if you can imagine most people I t- the best way to describe an asset map is to say that that almost well, hopefully all of us have a financial closet. We got a bunch of stuff that we've collected over the years and some of it fits, some of it we don't even know if it fits. Some of it's got holes in it. Some of it's leaking, you know, some of it's, you know, some of it's great. We're also missing things in that closet, right? Nobody's really inspected the closet, right? A perfect example is if if we were to do a little field trip and go to each other's closet and pull it all out and throw it on the bed and I think there's some things in there that probably don't fit or don't deserve to be there. And that's the, that's the resounding implication, Doug, is when you think about your own financial closet, who else has inspected it? So a financial advisor's first job is really to make sure what you have actually fits and meets what you're trying to do, right? Aligns with your objectives and goals. And that's why the fact-finding process is so important. But there's something interesting happens when you put somebody's own life in front of them visually. You actually get permission to inspect and say, wait, have you, why are we doing this? Have you thought about this? I see this is missing. What? And the this and the that represents investment instruments. It's insurance policies. It's trust. It's legal documents. I notice you have a lot of money in this. Why, what are you concerned about the tax? Well, nobody asked me that question before. So I, I think the, the key is to really promote a conversation and in that conversation, reveal the bigger pain points and areas where advisors can bring uh, you know, bring their value. The, the picture itself is a, imagine two, one or two or three people or a whole household in the center of your picture, surrounded by their income sources, their assets, their liabilities, and their insurance policies represented by containers or boxes, all color coded for what they are. And also tell me the highest level information that I need to know, which is what is it? It's an IRA. Where is it? Okay. It's at Fidelity. How much is worth? Uh, it's ten thousand dollars. Who controls it? Bob controls it. And what's the tax wrapper? Oh, this is an IRA. It gets certain tax treatment. That's about the extent of most humans' capacity to really, I think, frame a financial instrument without getting so far into details that you lose them. So I'm the biggest proponent on one pagers for for everything. If you can't put it on one page, I don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> Asset maps is phenomenal, but there has to be so much more behind it. Can you mm. dig a little deeper and tell us more? Yeah, sure. Well, I think that we tend to focus on, and, and I tend to be a bit of a zealot about, I don't want to build another financial planning tool. Uh, there's some great tools out there. Um, many of us use them, still use them for our highest end clients that really need robust calculation engines. They need vaults, they need aggregation. Uh, the challenge I found actually is that with all these great tools, nobody was really using them. 
In fact, I, the analogy I tend to think about, I just thought of it this morning, is that most financial planning tools, most CRM tools that we tend to acquire, you know, it's like buying a Cadillac Escalade to go pick up the groceries, right? I, every day I go, I get food, I have to you know, feed my family, but I, I don't need the, the full you know, Humvee or tank to go do something basic. In fact, I don't really use 90% of the functionality. So we said, what is the 10% that everybody uses? Right, that classic 80-20 Pareto principle. And it turns out that almost all financial advisors use, uh, use CRMs as a Rolodex, right? They put their names and maybe some notes, uh, maybe some important dates. That's about it. They use financial planning for the cash flow modeling and they put out a presentation. That presentation helps them close the business, right? They make a, a clear justification of why they know what they're doing and the client moves their money to them. Sometimes it's the last time the client will ever see a financial plan again, right? It's almost a closing tool. Um, and so, but these tools can do so much and I find that they're not using it. So asset map really is about, okay, give me only what I need to survive. I don't know if you remember that from the princess bride, right? He says that they're walking in the desert, pulls out this huge hair blower. As I said, take only what you need to survive. We, that's one of those jokes that I remember from my own childhood. Uh, but building that is actually a challenge because you want to make your tool as effective and as possible. So we've had to say no a lot, Doug. We've had to say, no, we're not going to build that because that now you're making this into a Swiss army knife. Where I think, where I think advisors and all of us have had a lot of aggravation is give me something that is just awesome and makes me look good. And so there's really three things that we've been focusing on. That's it. One is how do I actually collect data from a client really fast, like 15 minutes on their iPhone if I need to, and build a map from what they know in their head. Okay, cool. That's our asset map. Make that interactive, move it around, allow me to draw all over it just like that one pager, but, but make it useful and intelligent. That's that simple elegance. The second thing you have to be able to do is you have to tell people whether they're on track for major goals. Okay, remember most people that come to a financial professional, they're asking, uh, are we okay? And if we're not okay, what do we have to do about it? That's really what they're asking. And you know, that's what I ask my CPA. And I never really get a good straight answer. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that what we've done is we've basically done financial planning in 30 seconds. Press, press a button and it runs retirement, education, long-term care, life insurance, disability analysis, and tells you how funded you are. And if you're not funded, what are you going to do right now? Right? That, that's what people want to know. What are you going to do right now? And the third thing is all about data. Do you realize how much data <laughs> advisors have and don't know how to use? Mm -hmm. They have a lot. Uh, and so we basically have enabled them to do data mining right out of the box. Tell me all my clients that have this, but don't have this and are probably at risk for that. Um, and and bas basically create customized um, you know, data analysis so that you can find out who needs attention so I can proactively reach out. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. It is. So the industry has noticed you and for all the right reasons because of a user rating and not just having gargantuan booths at conferences what's the feedback you're getting from advisors? There's one, we have a, we've been very lucky um, in the sense, and I say this lucky because maybe we're at the right place at the right time. Although this idea is 10 years old already and everyone's like, wow, where have you been? Well, we didn't market. We didn't have a budget for marketing. All of our growth was grassroots. Uh, it came from advisor to advisor to advisor. Um, and that allowed us to really build for the advisor problem and not have another enterprise telling us what they wanted us to build. You know, I commonly joke that most of America is designed by bankers, right? Because the financier said, no, I love your design, but I really would like to add a pillar in the middle of this modern building. Like, what are you talking about? Well, I'm not giving you the money if I don't. The same things happen, I think, with software is that uh, is that, you know, enterprises have, I think, over, <laughs> overbuilt the product, said it needs to do these 10 things, but they've never actually been in the field before. So I, we stayed really, really true and we'll continue to stay true to the advisor problem and the journey of that interaction between the client and the advisor. What that means is that we've been really graced with um, an unbelievable net promoter score at over 64, 65, I think just recently. That's unheard of. In our industry, it's 32 on average. We have a great G2 rating, which is industry. We're, let, we're letting the community of people say whether you, they like us or not in an open forum where we can't restrict it. That is a huge difference between, I think, the past where you were kind of told, here's the tool to use, and you had no choices. Today, people have choice. So that means that we're more incumbent uh, upon, our success is more incumbent upon 
making sure the customer is seriously happy. Um, and the, my favorite quote, Doug, and I just, this is the one that just gets me all the time is uh, we get, it comes in different forms, but a client told uh, an end investor told, told an advisor said, this is what I've always wanted from you, but I didn't know how to ask for it by name. When you think about that, it's this kind of testimony about clients don't know how to ask for more from their financial professional. They want clarity. They want simplicity. They want to be engaged. They want to be part of this win. Uh, and they want to know when they're doing well. Um, but they get, you know, 500 statements they don't read. They, you know, so they don't really, they're not getting what they really need. They're just getting what they've always gotten. And that's where we have to change as an industry. Very much so. It, it seems like this is a tool that can increase the value proposition advisors bring to their clients a lot. We think so. You know what's uh, what's funny about that, Doug? <laughs> when you have a tool that is stripped down and you can't hide behind page 83, right? I'm not going to blow you away with my technical brilliance. It really forces the advisor to shine. And that means the advisor also is naked. When you have a one-page presentation, you can't uh, like make up stuff. <laughs> There's no place to hide. You got to really talk about it. But where I think it's going to add value and where it does add value is it's all in the conversation. There's been a lot of conversation, uh, at least recently in our industry about engagement. What does that mean? What does that mean? Right? Engagement. What's that sounds like we getting married? No, it means how do I get my customer, my investors actually involved and part of the process to the degree they're willing and interested. I'm not saying go day trade on your own. I'm saying you want to actually help me make decisions contextually because I'm giving you advice with a couple of options. Okay. But I want you to be part of it. This is not me presenting to you anymore. Here, look at this great pie chart of all this uh, allocation. And here's your modern portfolio theory. You've got a Monte Carlo analysis that says you're going to be 85%. What? Okay. Sure. What? What did he say? I don't know, honey. What? I'm talking about let's, should we take this money that's here and move it over there? Here's why we would do that. We get this tax savings. We get this cost savings. We think we could increase the return or we could do something else. Where would you like to do it? Would you like to move it from here to here or from here, there to there? That visually, once you can connect that, you start doing what I call core education, connecting what you don't know to what you do know. Cause that's, that is literally the basis of all education, right? And I, the challenge is we're trying to fill in this gap for it, for investors, which is nobody ever told me why I need to structure this insurance and trust or why I'm better off having this amount in a taxable account versus not, or why I got to manage my tax bracket in retirement or, right? We don't talk about that. We talk about whether GameStop is a good investment, right? And, and that's, that's doing a disservice on the planning side. We got we to zoom out. Where are we going from here? What's on the future runway for asset map? Oh, you want me to tell you that? I do. I do. Hmm. All right. I'll give you a view. Asset map is a, in many ways, a financial x-ray, right? It's, it's a visualization that helps professionals look at it and see distinctions. And then of course, communicate where things are rel you know, relatively. It also tells you whether you're on track for major goals financially. So it's doing that calculation engine. Well, what I think we've been, we realize that we're missing is the fact that a lot of advisors, that's a free form tool. You can take it wherever direction you want. Property, casualty, banking, insurance, investment, doesn't matter. What I think we have the capacity to do, and we're gonna be rolling out something this summer called screening. And when you have as much data as we have, all of a sudden you start to see different patterns. So we're gonna be rolling out what I call, also for, the, for those that are, we're using this educational principle, red light, green light. Remember when we were kids, I know you know what a red light and a green light is. Mm -hmm. There was this thing called Mother May I. My daughter plays it. She do red light, green light, right? Can you come closer? I'm, I'm probably messing up the games, right? Because I'm I'm not nine. <laughs> but it was something like this. And I and I watched them play this a couple of years ago. It's like that's what advisors need. They need to know when the engine light is on for their clients, right? You ever get in your car and all of a sudden the engine light comes on and says, okay, go check it out. It doesn't mean that your car is going to fall apart right now. It might, by the way. It means do something about it. And so what we're going to be, what we're, we're delivering is this concept of uh, red light, green light for six major components. I won't say what they are, but essentially there are 
really awareness keys for an advisor to say, listen, I, my system is coming up as red light on this. Let's, let's, let's explore this. Let's get under the hood and decide whether a wire is just disconnected or there's a real issue here. And, and this I think is going to really help because we're not just doing it on a per household basis. We'll be applying it to the entire database, which means every single advisor and their entire book of business, we will know where the red lights are and the yellow lights are. Uh, and I think that's going to be, this is going to be really unique because it's, it's not going to tell you you're sick, Doug. It's going to tell you, Hey, you probably want to check it out. Yeah. It's and like, let's decide. It's like my Tahoe is telling me <laughs> oil change and OnStar connects my dealership and they send me an email that says, Hey, you may need, may need an oil change. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's, it is. it's functionally helpful. It doesn't create uh, an emergency, but it creates a sense of urgency that we are knowledgeably running around without oil <laughs> and, or maybe something that can work. Right. And that's valuable. I mean, we all have way too much to do, right? Tell me what needs attention right now and I'll prioritize. Yeah. Adam, this has been fabulous. How do people find you guys? Well, the easiest way, of course, is the web. You can certainly Google us at AssetMap or Asset-Map.com. Uh, that's a dash for those who don't know. Um, and certainly you're welcome to uh, reach out on LinkedIn to follow me there at H. Adam Holt. Uh, it's, always, uh, it's always fun to build the community. So looking forward to connecting with anybody who's uh, is interested in taking their practice to a whole new level. So we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. For everybody at Advisorpedia, our podcast team, our producer, Jakey Beard. This is Doug Heikinen. Take care.